my garden and I thought I got stuck by a bush that I had and I'm pretty sure it was a poisonous snake. <laughs> my finger swelled up and uh, the, everything just painful for a week now. Well, painful when you touched it, but I really, other than touching it, it's like no big deal other than this big fat appendage that you're coming. <laughs> Never mind, don't start your equipment yet. <laughs> oh, my God. The, the stuff that's at the front of these things is just bad. Okay. Um, turn with me to uh, Matthew chapter 5. <clears throat> and we're using, uh, what the subject is law and grace, but we also have up here Lamben law, lamben, lamben law, lamben law. Looks like one word to me. That's the that's the last name of my Jewish attorney, lamben law. Anyway, <laughs> I don't know why I say this stuff. <laughs> this is so bad. <laughs> oh my Lord, God help me. You know, okay, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna sober up now. <clears throat> All right, anyway, the, um, this, this class this is uh, Law and Grace, but we've been calling it uh, Law and Lamb. Whoever did that top part is... Grace and Lamb, yeah. It's, yeah, I, I can imagine. I think I'm bad. Y'all are worse than me. <clears throat> anyway, um, and uh, in doing that, we are actually trying to look at this contrast of law living, law thinking, law ways of doing things, law mindsets compared to uh, the Lamb, which is Christ in us, compared to a release of life, which would be a release of lamb life, um, not just a release of miracles or power, but the release of, of him through his body, Jesus living in us and manifesting through us. And um, so I, I'd read a couple of paragraphs last time. I think I'll start with that so that we can <clears throat> be back on point. We always characterize the law as a book meaning the Old Testament. Okay, so the law is a book, some people say. Well, no, it's not. Uh, the Old Testament is not a, a book of the law, though it has the Old Covenant in it. <clears throat> but we find, we find in, for example, Hebrews, people that were in the Old Testament that were, they were heroes of faith. So, um, we also characterize it as uh, certain covenant relations, certain covenant relations. And that's true, but it's not true. Um, you don't have to, um, oh, how can I best say that without disparaging the whole universe? <laughs> yeah. uh, I just won't say it. Um, and uh, it is um, seen as a set of rules. Ten Commandments, 239 Commandments, 500 Commandments, anyway. You yeah, have seven Commandments. Um, but... Uh, but I would like to, for us to see it in relationship to how certain people act. The, the contrast of law and lamb. How certain people act, which includes the basis of their judgments, the basis of their judgments, and the common threads that hold them all together as one entity, people under the law. Uh, and, of course, this includes having a certain kind of mindset. All right. So in the same manner, I'd like us to see 
what we contrast with law is not just grace. And you've heard me say it many times, but grace, you know, even though most people, when you study this, they contrast law and grace, but grace is nothing more than the, than the benefits, whether they be salvation or that now we're under the, uh, the blessing of God or the, the good graces of God, um, is only a result of the lamb dying on the cross, period. Comes from there. And um, so you have to see grace in light of the lamb. Now, we're going to see it in light of what the Lamb did at the cross, but we're mainly going to be seeing it, since we're going to be in Matthew, in light of the Lamb, how he lives the new covenant. The new covenant is Christ in you. The new covenant isn't just rules or, or um, a book or all that kind of stuff either. And we're going to see grace, or we're going to see it in light of... Uh, our relation to how certain people act this is the same thing I said for the other one. The basis of their judgments, mindsets, and common threads that hold them all together as one entity. And particularly, particularly, you are one entity in Christ. It is him. And it is his life. It is his body, so he has a right to live through it. And to, and to manifest how he wants to through it. <clears throat> we might call this class the emphasis of it, law and lamb. All right. So, I want to, let's see, keep your place here in Matthew, although we didn't read anything yet. But uh, let's go to Luke chapter 2. And I want to give just a small example of this thing that we're talking about here. This is Luke 2 and verse 34 and 35. And this is when Jesus was born and, and uh, Mary and Joseph took him into the temple and there was this old guy named Simeon and he was, um, uh, he was in there and this was his response. Uh, and basically it sounds prophetic. Verse 34, and Simeon blessed them. Okay, now first of all, I want you, I want you to comprehend not necessarily this realm, but I want you to comprehend that in, when the lamb does certain things, when the lamb does certain things, it's going to be completely different than the law. And that means that sometimes the blessings are going to appear like curses. And, and it's, it's confusing unless... You comprehend the being, the person of the new covenant. We call him Jesus Christ. But he is, that's, that's his name, the name that was given him at his birth, Jesus. But what he was, not just his designation, what he was from before the foundation of the world was a lamb. All right, so um, here in verse 34, and Simeon blessed them and said unto Mary, his mother, Behold, this child is set for the fall and rising again of many. Okay, um, wow. This is, here's the blessing. <laughs> He's set for people falling and rising. Okay, uh, but it gets worse. Uh, it, many in Israel, and for a sign which shall be spoken against. Here's part of the blessing. And then, verse 35, Yea, a sword shall pierce through thine, thy own soul also, that the thoughts of many hearts may be revealed. Okay, so this is the, this is the blessing. The sword's going to pierce you. And, and this child will be spoken against, and it'll affect you is basically what it's saying. All right. So, you know, and you know how we are. So we read in there, um, it, it, you know, he is set for the rising, the fall and ri the rising and fall of many. Okay. So where do our little minds go? Our mind goes, well, I got saved. I mean, I, I did the right thing. I got Jesus. And those people didn't. And, and I'm better than them. Oh, we see, well, we'd never go there, but we'd go. Uh, there's one right there. You know, 
<laughs> and, and we get into judgments. Judgments. And here's the problem with judging is that we, um, we don't know how to judge correctly. We don't, I mean, we don't. We don't know how to judge correctly. We don't know how to judge the cross correctly. We know how to judge the benefits of the cross very well, and we're right with most of those benefits, although we don't include all of the benefits because the vast majority of the benefits of the cross is oneness with Christ and all that comes to us through him that is him, such as patience. <laughs> right? Um, and God, Jesus said, I judge no man. And the scripture says uh, that God looketh upon the heart, man looketh on the outward appearance, which is, which is also a wrong judgment made by Jesus and made about Jesus himself. Right? If, they, if they knew that was the Son of God, they wouldn't have done what they did. All right. So, you know, uh, there's no way to explain all this because it, it is part of the mindset and attitude and way of people under law, which is meaning that they have, um, they've figured out what's right and wrong. They've figured out what's right and wrong. Okay. So you say, well, wasn't that the old covenant and God made? Yeah, there's a whole long thing. We'll get into all that eventually. But right now, you have to realize that the lamb is not judging. The lamb is dying so he doesn't have to bring judgment. Okay? And guess what? He's doing that in us so that we don't have to bring judgment against others. Okay. But it has to be him. And if it's not him, it's us. And if it's us, guess what? We're going to do this thing. We are. It's, it's us. It is us. Now, I know that, you know, I know that some of you are better than others, and therefore it's for your rising and their fall. See, there we go. See, that's where our minds go. See, that's it. So even when we say all that, then we immediately go, yeah, but I'm not, you know, and therefore I'm going to rise out of all of this. Uh, yes and no. Anyway, um, uh, what we may not realize is that both apply to us, the rising and the fall. They both apply to us. They both have bearing on us. To see and seek only one aspect is to view things from the law perspective, either blessings or curses. The lamb is more than the law. Okay? So, um, this, uh, again, we don't realize that to, to go to that mindset is, not, is to not go to the mind of Christ, who made himself of no reputation and da 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 da. It, go, it says, it, here's what it does. It's like a computer that evaluates itself real quick in light of them, not knowing them, and them not knowing you, and, and evaluates, and then it makes a judgment, and that judgment is usually we're on top unless we're not doing good, and then we'll be low for a period of time. I mean, I, I know what I'm talking about here, people. <laughs> and then you rise back up, see? But the rising there, what if the rising was talking about, you know, the flesh? And what if the, 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 the fall is being brought down into death with Christ? See, we don't know how to judge correctly. We don't. We, we don't have enough information, um, but it's more than that. We don't have the mind of Christ fully operational, you know? We have, theologically, we do have the mind of Christ. But for most of it, it is not, you know, it's a, not a good way to say it, fully operational. But it is certainly not operational in most aspects when we are off guard. How about that one? Because then what, what we really are comes out. You know. All right. <clears throat> so... Um, uh, let's see here. So, <clears throat> the 
uh, the way of the lamb is meant to, I, I know the other word, but it's just it's failed me around here. It's meant, yeah. The way of the lamb is meant to condemn and bring hope. And that's so important. If you know that and you always know that, then you know that the end thereof shall be him. And there's hope because Christ in you is that hope. So there's hope. There's always hope. Not because of you or me or those people that are the fall. <laughs> not the rising like us. The hope is Christ. The hope is him. But there's hope always a condemning and then a hope. And guess what? You see that in God's dealing in the Old Testament. God was an old covenant. He thought he still had the mind of the cross. He still had, he, he was still lamb. He was still that way. And, and if you get this, it will change the way you read the prophets or, or so many stories in the Old Testament because you will realize that the 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 prophets that would go, whoa, unto you, you're going to, you know, I mean, you, you can take Jeremiah or any of them and whoa, and they blast them and just blast them and then say, but then the Lord will remember his, and he will be merciful. And you're going, why, why does he do this? He's killing me, you know, <laughs> you're killing me. Just stay with me here. But the truth is, one has to do with the death of the old man or the old nature or us, and the other one has to do with Christ coming forth. Both are true. Always both are true. And I'm telling you, it will change the way you read the Bible when you start seeing that because then you'll realize he's never just talking about, well, you people messed up and therefore I'm going to destroy you. Let me tell you, Israel continually broke the law. Is this right or wrong? Yes. They never kept it. The New Testament says that they never kept it. They should have been wiped out. Every day, all the curses from Mount Ebal should have come on them. Am I right or wrong? In, in boatloads. <laughs> you know? But God was more merciful to him than otherwise. Where does that come from? It comes from his heart to gain his son and he will put us through hell to get Christ formed in us. You know? And uh, so, um, <clears throat> to me, uh, let's see, where was I here? But he's not primarily cursing on the basis of personal failure like in the Old Covenant, as much as cursing that which falls short of the Lamb's nature. Because why? Because he loves us, because he wants oneness, because oneness is our only hope, because he is our only hope, and to be one with him is our hope. And until we realize that, it's just us, and we think we're so wonderful that, that we're completely under the law, thinking we deserve Something that we don't deserve. We deserve death. You know? And the day that you sin, you shall surely die. What if he carried that out? Every time somebody sinned, he just killed them. There wouldn't be anybody on the planet. <laughs> Let's just pray that way right now. <laughs> you know? So there has to be something else working in him, even in what we call the Old Covenant. But God was an old covenant. He's always Christ-centered, lamb-centered in nature. <clears throat> All right, so there is that, and there is that um, uh, uh, aspect of the curses in that sense, but they're not curses. Jesus will pronounce in, in Matthew 5, 6, and 7, he'll pronounce things that sound like curses in that sense, but they're not curses. They are leading us to lambness. <clears throat> and so uh, I wrote, to see and seek only one aspect is to view things from a, a uh, law perspective, either blessings or curses. Um, uh, the purpose of the law is to condemn us, 
but we're not under the law. We're not under the law. But then I wrote, where, where is that one again? We're not under the law. We're under the new covenant in this sense of his spirit and his nature. Okay, so it's like the laver, all right? You remember the, the Hebrew priests? They would go in, and as soon as you enter into the door of the tabernacle, there's the altar. And then you, the next thing is a big bowl, a big brass bowl filled with water, and the priest would kill his sacrifice. Then he would go to the laver and he would wash because he could see the blemishes and stuff. And then he was able to go into the holy place where is the, the table of showbread and the candlestick and uh, the altar of incense <clears throat> so that he would be able to make progression. But, but the laver, see, it was made of brass. And, the, and back then they didn't have glass mirrors. So the women's mirrors were brass and that's actually where the labor came from all the women donated their mirrors and they made this big bowl that kept water in it but it was um it was shined in such a manner where you could see yourself so you walk up to there and you look in it and you go oh my god look at all these spots and blemishes and i can enter in there with spots and blemishes and what am i going to do and oh god help me and da, 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 da. well that's the law the law is like a Pharisee finger coming out of that book going, you're not measuring up. You're not worthy. You're, you're a failure. You, you, know, you can't do this. You're da-da-da-da. And everything about it is meant to bring you down until you've gone to the cross and can see the truth. But in the labor, you see the, you see the blemishes but it's also got water, and you can wash in the water of the word. You see? Well, that's the new covenant. Um, let's see, I wrote, just the statements of the, the uh, Beatitudes are meant to condemn us first and then give us hope. It is similar to the labor. The purpose of the law is to condemn us, but we're not under the law, so God brings in the lamb, and here it comes, but God brings in the Lamb whereby the cross condemns us worse. All right. So let's, um, let's take it to the labor again. We go to the labor, and under the Old Covenant, you could see your spots and blemishes, but you could wash in the water of the Word. You, I mean, it, with the labor, you could wash and remove those blemishes. It condemned you, but you're still alive. The condemnation in the new covenant is all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. There's none righteous. No, not one. We all deserve death, but he gave us a death that wasn't, uh, that didn't annihilate us and send us to hell. He gave us a death that we were one with him. And in that, he bears the condemnation. He bears the blame. But we're one with him and we rise up as his body. Okay? So, the condemnation in the new covenant or in the Beatitudes is worse. It's meant to be. It has to be. This is no fall. This is death. This is no rising. This is him as the resurrection. This is the necessity for you and me to be gone. That Christ the Lamb, not just Christ, Christ the Lamb may be enthroned on a throne that is inside of New Jerusalem. Have you seen the bride, the wife of the Lamb? Amen. We go, like John, no, I haven't seen her. Well, come follow me. You know? And we go, yeah, that's us. We're, we got 
gates of pearl and streets of gold in us. And, you know, we're, I don't know what we're <laughs> But we, we, we look at that picture and we don't see what's there. What do we see that's there? An invisible, in this sense, wife, body. This is the bride, and this is how she is. There's a throne in her. Wait, it gets better. <laughs> There's a lamb on that throne, and that's the husband. That's the one. And he's in her on the throne. Wait, there's more. Rivers of living water pour out of him and that throne. Now, if he's on the throne, that's, it's not just popping up, you know, like the, the, the transparent walls, you know, of the New Jerusalem. There's this water going, shooting out over here. And, you know, look, we got, you know. It's not coming out of us. It's coming out of him out of us. That's different. That's a big difference. And, and can you imagine if you were John and actually saw that? Now, now I got a feeling he got it because he wrote about it. I think he got it. He's going, oh, my God. I see her. No, I don't. I see him. No, I don't. I see lamb. I see lamb enthroned. And everything else is a result of that. Lamb is the light of the thing. We don't need illumination in here anymore. New Jerusalem doesn't need any more lamps. And on and on and on, as it says, you know, no more temple. We're that temple. See? We're not going to go to temple. But compare, please, with me, compare our version of Jesus being in us with that version and him flowing out of her as lamb. Hallelujah. And our version is so short of reality. It's short of, of his reality. Amen. We're supposed to be one with him. We're supposed to plug into his mind. No, we got our own mind. Here's what I think it is. It doesn't matter what I think or you think. It doesn't. In light of this, it doesn't matter what we think. It matters what is and what we're part of. And let us rejoice and be glad. Yes. For the marriage supper of the Lamb has come. And we're going to feast in this. We're not going to go, well, I don't know. I don't like what they're wearing. I'm going to wear this. <laughs> it goes, sorry, dude, no wedding garment. Sakalavaka. Well, I think we should do this, or I think, no, no, no. It is the whole point of true transparency is that the lamb would be seen. Yes. I was telling somebody the other day, I had, I had somebody... <clears throat> I had somebody say to me a bunch of years ago, you know, they're just telling me all these problems and blaming me and all this kind of stuff for the church and all this kind of stuff. But, you know, I could tell that there was an underlying motive. They were trying to work their way into a position and be something. And, you know, and, and so when he got through, he says, you know, I'm just, I'm sorry, but I'm just trying to be transparent. And I said, well, you sure are, because I can see right through you. Yeah. <laughs> you know? <laughs> you know, I said, we need to continue this conversation here. Um, that's different. That kind of transparency is not what's it, what the bride is supposed to have. Well, let me just tell you. You know, it's like a big mouth on the side of, the, of New Jerusalem. Let me just tell you what's wrong. <laughs> let me just... <laughs> I know I have weird pictures, but nonetheless... Is, let, me, let me tell you what's wrong here. First of all, we need the sun. You know, we need a sun shining in this place. Well, or this or that. You know, just, well, I'm just, you know, I'm just being transparent with you. I, it's okay that I walk in New Jerusalem, throw up, bring, bring Babylon in here, throw up into it, and then walk off and say, I'm okay because I was just being transparent. 
Be transparent and let the lamb shine out of you. I mean, how many, how many scriptures do you have on being transparent the way we use it? <laughs> I'm just being real. I got to be real with you. I hope you don't mind, but I'm going to be real. I hope you don't mind. I'd rather you be dead, you know, with Christ. Not, not be going, I wish you were dead. That's not what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah, a lot of times that comes up. I'm going to be real. I wish you were dead, sucker. <clears throat> That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about <laughs> the life of the Lamb flowing out like rivers of living water. We go, I got baptized in the Holy Spirit. You should see the living waters that flow out of me. I, you know, is it lamb th enthroned in you? Yes, it brings healing to the nations. And can you imagine the new Jerusalem? Sitting there going, well, you know, I, I got living water. I'm ministering to people. You don't, you know, pointing through the gl transparent glass to people out there. You don't. You ain't ministering the way I am. <laughs> and what a contrast that is. What a contrast to the, to the one that's on the throne. Or is he on the throne? And do we have to admit then that the picture changes drastically? There's no water flowing out of New Jerusalem that doesn't come out of the Lamb that's enthroned in her. So whatever's coming out of you, I don't know. But it, it, it is meant to be Lamb, not law. And all of the contrasts I gave you is law and judgments. Law and judgments. Everything that I've been saying up to this point, contrasting New Jerusalem in the way that it's either, the, it's either, although we don't see it that way, it is a mentality that I am, uh, even though we never think that I am superior and you're the one with the faults, or, you know, I'm just trying to help you by pointing out what's wrong instead of I'm going to lay down my life like Jesus did. How did Jesus get on that throne? How did he get there? He got there because he laid down his life for everybody else and took the blame. So, we having fun yet? <laughs> Still glad you came. I usually say that, that line for conferences in other countries, but, you know, I'm just being real here. <laughs> God, All right, so let's, let's use some examples now of, uh, the, of contrasting certain things. Let's go to, uh, keep your place in Matthew 5, but let's go to Deuteronomy chapter 28. <clears throat> and we're going to give you, we're going to give you an interesting comparison of law and lamb. Okay? So what, what am I going to, what am I about to give you? An interesting comparison of law and lamb. All right, well, what does that mean? I want you to think about what that means right now. Wait a minute, don't go to law like the curses. We're going to contrast the law because remember, Mount Ebal and Mount Gerizim were the law. Are y'all with me? Do y'all follow that? That we're talking about an interesting comparison of blessings with Jesus' blessings. Yeah. One is law blessings and one is lamb blessings. Yeah. All right, ready? All right, Deuteronomy uh, 28, 13. And the Lord shall make thee the head and not the tail, and thou shalt be above only, and thou shalt not be beneath, if thou hearken unto the commandments of the Lord thy God, which I command thee this day to observe. All right, keep your place there. Now let's go back to Matthew 5, and let's, um, let's look at um, verse 3. <clears throat> Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs 
is the kingdom. Okay? Now, what you just heard is an everlasting, eternal, forever and ever contrast Amen. of law and land. Amen. You want some more? Yes. Okay. I'm glad because I have some more. Uh, let's go back. Deuteronomy 28.10. And on that last one, I, let's say maybe I did. Uh, for example, being poor in spirit is not being is not being the head and not the tail, right? Amen. All right. Back to verse ten now. <clears throat> and all the people of the earth shall see that thou art called by the name of the Lord, and thou shalt, uh, and they shall be afraid of thee. All right. Let's go back to verse four. Blessed are they that mourn. For they shall be comforted. One, one is coming from this spirit that is not lamb. Can you guess which one? <laughs> I'm just, I want you to work at it. Um, let's see. And so I wrote, uh, um, for example, being, uh, let's see, that's not it. Or the Lord will make your enemies to mourn, not you. That's what we're thinking. The Lord's going to make my enemies to mourn. Okay. And that's the blessing under the law. Folks, that's powerful if you'll just meditate on it. We're not done yet. But I mean, it's just incredibly powerful because this section of Deuteronomy is totally dedicated to the law. If you... Break it, this is coming on you. If you keep the law, this is what you get. And then remember, remember in our last class, we drew uh, Mount Ebal. And then we had the valley in between. And then we had Mount, Mount Gerizim. And the curses came from Mount Ebal, and the blessings from Mount Gerizim, and the people were down here uh, in, the, in the valley in between. But we said last time, we read Matthew 5, or Matthew 5, the first verse, and it says, and Jesus, when he saw the multitude, went up into a high mountain, and it wasn't Ebal or Gerizim. And, and I called it Mount Calvary, not because literally he was on, on Mount Calvary, but everything he speaks comes from the cross. Yeah. We'll, 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 we hadn't actually gone through anything yet that he said there, other than we're finally bringing it up here. Okay. So, what if... We, what if we as a people didn't understand this and we contrasted evil as Christians? We contrasted evil with Gerizim and we said, we're blessed because we're Christians. The rising belongs to us and the fall belongs to the Jews. Yes. It was really pretty scary. I never saw it in that light that you showed that very first point about being the head, not the tail. Yes. You know, just kind of by default, that kind of makes Jesus the tail. I mean, he can't be the head if I'm the head, you know, right. and that's very troubling. <laughs> to, you know what I'm saying? That, that I would, or any of us would so quickly embrace that kind of a blessing without any thought of the implications to Jesus. Right. You see what I'm saying? That's not even to other people, let alone them, but to Jesus first. Well, one reason why it's embraced, and it's embraced as new covenant blessings, is because we, it's what I said, number one, we don't understand new, we don't understand lamb blessings. We don't understand the cross from God's point of view. The second reason is we clearly don't really grasp what the Old Testament is saying. I mean, it has to be. I'm not, I'm not judging. I'm just saying, if, if you... If this is a setup here for the Old Covenant, and it is totally based on if you're good enough, 
then you're going to be this. Then, then, and then this over here is going to be the bad stuff, but we're going to get the good stuff. Then he does, doesn't understand that the blessings never were to us from the law. I mean, I'm just saying in, I'm just saying in general, the, this is law and the blessing. We go, the, the curses aren't due us. Right? I mean, we're good at that one. <laughs> the curses, uh, we, Jesus died and we don't get the curses. We get the blessings. No, that's law blessings. If you kept everything and never failed, you get them. And of course, the way these word these blessings are worded, we go, yeah. It just draws out that, you know, that greater self. <laughs> yes. Deb. Thinking about the Psalms, that um, I'm not sure of this, but it seems that before David really saw the cross, that he was at this mentality like this: curse my enemies, bless me, O Lord. And that he was in that, and then when he, you know, when God broke him and he began to see the cross, then the spirit of the Lamb began to be formed in him, and he received that loving kindness of the Lord. That it was something of uh, coming from the Lord, and then being inside of him, he became to union, you know. Right. But is that correct that he, David, was like this for a while? I mean, like us. You mean under the law? Yeah, he's evil. Well, I, I, I mean, they were, they were, but, you know, clearly David and those mentioned in Hebrews 11 at some juncture, because, you know, it, it mentions the junctures, yeah, yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah. it wasn't like David, you know, plopped out of his mother's womb and God went, you're blessed with all the, you know, everything that's new covenant. No, he, he wasn't. And you see that. I mean, you, you, you can see that. I mean, he's. He, he is chased off by Saul, and he has nowhere to go, so he goes down to the Philistines' camp, to one of their big cities, and he knocks on the gate, and they say to the head Philistine, should we let this guy in? He goes, that's David. That's the one who killed Goliath, <laughs> you know? And so they go out to get him, and he's slobbering. <laughs> Y'all remember that? It's there. <laughs> and he stayed with him for a good amount of time, and they went, it's okay, buddy. You, you went crazy because you killed one of them good men, you know? And that's why your, your brain messed up, you know? <laughs> um, later, he sort of learned... <laughs> to lay down his life, like when Saul comes and is in the, the cave uh, that they were in, and his men say, God has delivered him into your hand, and every one of us at some juncture would have said, this is God justifying me, because I'm the head and not the tail, and he's the tail, and you're going to suffer, sucker, you know, to the glory of God, you know, but he goes, no, we're not going to do that. We are not going to do that. Yeah. Well, that was not just a good man, David. That was God forming his heart in David. Absolutely. All right. Um, okay. Uh, let's, let's look in Matthew 5, verse 10 and 11. <clears throat> Blessed are they who are persecuted for righteousness' sakes, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you and shall say all manner of evil against you for my sake. So he goes on to say, Rejoice and be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven. For so persecuted they the prophets who were before you. So that last part, and persecute you and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely. <clears throat> Anybody here had anything said against them falsely? Oh, we got one, one person, Mallory. <laughs> Just kidding. 
Um, I've had all manner. <laughs> all manner of things that I couldn't even have dreamed up. Um, but, and it does say in this case falsely, but he's still saying that this is one of the blessings. See, the Beatitudes, folks, are blessings from this mount right here, Mount Calvary, or Lamb Calvary, or whatever you want to call it, the, this new mountain right here. That we, you know, it is, they're all blessings. It's, these are blessings from the law if you do everything perfect. But the blessings that Jesus, blessed are they that da, 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 blessed are they that do, blessed is this, blessed is that, blessings, 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 but all of this, which we said in one of our last classes, comes to us if there is first death. Remember, in Jesus, there is condemnation and death, and then there is life and being raised, but not you rising. He rose, and you rose in him. It's different. <clears throat> and... And that's why uh, Simeon called it a blessing. And Simeon opened his mouth and blessed him, saying, fall and rising. Well, that, he said it was Jesus. But he said, many, one body. One body made of many members. And that is a blessing. See, that's not this over here. See, in this scenario, Mount Gerizim and Mount Ebal, in that scenario, there is uh, blessings, but there are also curses for failures. And they are all personal. It's all personal righteousness. But the righteousness he's calling for here is Jesus has made unto us wisdom and righteousness and sanctification and redemption so that he that glorieth, for God's sake, let him glory in the Lord. You know? <clears throat> All right, so blessed are they that persecute you and da-da-da-da. All right, now let's go to uh, Deuteronomy um, 28, verse 7. <clears throat> The Lord shall cause thine enemies who rise up against thee to be smitten before thy face. They shall come out against thee one way and flee before thee seven. <clears throat> All right. Um, I'll state the obvious. Uh, the blessings from Jesus on that mountain or blessed are they that mourn, blessed are they that are persecuted, blessed are they that, you know. And it has to do with being dead enough, dead. Just dead is enough. <laughs> but some of you think you're dead and you ain't dead enough. So, <laughs> but I mean, is, is this um, reality where Christ out of, you know, it's kind of like out of your ashes. He comes forth and, the, and he's being persecuted or you're being persecuted in relationship to him. And in other places in chapter 5 of, of Matthew, we'll see. Turn the other cheek. They take your coat, give them your cloak, da 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 da, on and on and on. It is never, it is never this thing, and what was my wording here? Your enemies will be destroyed according to, Deut well, let's see. Or the Lord will, uh, let's see. Or instead of you being persecuted and reviled, your enemies will be destroyed. See? So, there's a mentality. And there's been a mentality formed in the church. Not everybody in the church and not every church. But there has been a mentality formed that this is, these blessings right here are what we hold to the most. We're going to be the head and not the tail. We're going to, you know, our enemies are coming against us one way and they'll flee before us seven ways and all of this kind of stuff. And Jesus is saying just the opposite of that. Just the opposite. So, 
Uh, can you kind of see now why we're contrasting law and lamb? Because that's the true contrast that's taking place here. That's really what's happening. So uh, today some people are looking for the blessings that come by keeping the law instead of the blessings that come by the lamb from Mount Calvary. And forget this mountain that Jesus is sitting on and teaching these things, whatever the name was, because we don't know and we don't know as much if it was Calvary or not. We know this in his death on the real Mount Calvary. That's where every blessing comes from. That's where it all comes from. See, and, and with that comes a reality that it is not about me. Uh, you know, I, I was watching a movie the other night and it's, you know, it's just like, it's that same, same pattern, that same formula. There's one formula in movies for men and there's another formula for women. Anybody notice that? It's pretty obvious. My God, you know, you just change the name, change the country, change the place, change the circumstances, and the guy has to get back and get revenge. And we're rooting for him because they, they make the bad guys so bad that you just want to see him slaughtered. You know? And so when he, whatever, how, whatever manner it's happening, you go, yeah! Some of you girls fall in that category too. <laughs> I was, I was going to protect the women, but I can't protect you from the cross. <clears throat> and then the love story, we won't get into that, but the whole, well, I mean, because the whole point right here is Mount Gerizim really feeds that thing in us. It says, yeah, my enemies will, you know, if they persecute me and they do this, they'll realize that I'm of God and they're not and what they're doing is not of God and they shouldn't be doing it and the only way they're going to realize that is they're going to have to be whooped and then flee and go seven different ways. And they'll see I'm the head and not the tail. Well, if that's your attitude, you are the tail. Because you just made a... Never mind. What? Well, it is. It is. But it's... It is only to see because a picture gets painted for us that is not New Covenant. Or, can I say it? A picture gets painted that is not Christ. Yeah. Oh, can I say it? A picture gets painted for us that is not Christ crucified. Oh, can I say a little clearer? A picture gets painted that's not the lamb within us flowing out of us and producing life because of the death that he died. Yeah. And because, because death lives in us, if you will. He said death worketh in me. Death lives in us. Death worketh. That's an ongoing process. But life in others, life in you. Yeah. So we don't want to admit that. We don't, you teach that, you know? Why do you think I had to raise up my own church and Bible school? I couldn't teach this anywhere. Not really. I do it around the world. But nonetheless, to say something like that, well, death lives in me. They go, well, let me cast that out. <laughs> it's Jesus. No, 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 no. What well, it says right here in the scripture, well, it means something else. Well, I've had that. Take up your cross and follow me. I've even that one. That one as simple as that is. And they say, well, Jesus didn't mean that. <laughs> no. I've had that. I've had someone say, well, what do you suppose he meant? <laughs> you know? Well, he meant that we're supposed to be committed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Excellent. Excellent. Michael said committed all right. <laughs> Excellent. Well, so, so anyway, we'll close with this. Well, let's go ahead and take a break and we'll come back and hit some other stuff.